there. Today, I'd like to speak specifically to Facebook users, but before I do, I'll give you a moment to close out of your ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend's profile page. <laughs> uh, by the way, you're not imagining it. They are absolutely happier than they have ever been. <laughs> so, let's, let's begin. Let's begin. Now, for the, for the last few years, variations on this privacy statement have been making the rounds on Facebook. Uh, as many of you seem to believe that posting it prohibits Facebook from owning the content that you post. <laughs> Unfortunately, you might as well be posting this picture of a sloth revealing a woman's cleavage because it would grant you literally the same legal rights. You see, posting these statements is meaningless, no matter how serious their language may be. One of the more popular versions begins with the sentence, I do declare the following. Now, <laughs> let me stop you right there. And this is important. Just because you say something in the voice of a Southern debutante... <laughs> does not make it legally binding. I do declare, Mr Beauregard, <laughs> that status update about last night's episode of Scandal is mine. Mine alone. Mine alone. I do declare. I declare it. Other versions cite the Rome Statute, a treaty that established the International Criminal Court. So, it's quite irrelevant to social media, although I will agree that posting too many pictures of your ugly baby should be a crime against humanity. <laughs> but not only that, a few of the messages being shared misspell it as the Rome statue, <laughs> implying that your Facebook page is protected by Bernini's sculpture of David. <laughs> and it's not. It's not. The point is, posting that message will accomplish nothing. But that's, that's not because wall posts don't override terms of service agreements or that Facebook doesn't own your content in the first place in the way the mainstream media would have you believe. <laughs> it's because the only true way to protect your content on Facebook is by posting this video. Yes, the one that you are currently watching starring me. John Perry Barlow is a former songwriter for The Grateful Dead and the joint founder of the Electronic Frontier Foundation which lobbies for cyber rights. He shares Eric's concerns for the future of free speech on the internet. What we're dealing with is the battle between the future and the past, between the powers that were and the powers that have yet to be. John believes the internet will change the world, much like the Industrial Revolution did at the end of the 19th century. He has crafted his own declaration of independence for the citizens of cyberspace. Governments of the industrial world, I come from cyberspace, the new home of mind. On behalf of the future, I ask you of the past to leave us alone. You are not welcome here. You have no sovereignty where we gather. You do not know us, nor do you know our world. Cyberspace does not lie within your borders. Your legal concepts of property, expression, identity, movement and context do not apply to us. They are all based on matter. And there is no matter here. Introducing the all-new Minds.com, making the desktop an app too. The newsfeed features inline videos, rich content, no need for page reloads, analytical insights into your past week's posts, and also Boost for the web too, including the all-new Boost Pro, which allows you to share your posts between channels for points or money. Every area of the site has been rebuilt from the ground up and offers a sleek and responsive design, such as channels, the brand new uploader, discovery, video plays, blogs, notifications, the wallet, and search. Check out the new Minds.com today at www.minds.com.